guys yes people welcome back to the channel welcome back to another episode of five things we learned i know i said in the last episode that it was the final one of the season but nope back again shout out to back again as always but we're here for one final episode of five things we learned five things we learned from this season the 23 24 season what a frustrating mad roller coaster of a season from start to finish so many lows some ups a positive ending a cup final another manager sacking um players stepping up plenty plenty to discuss in this video so big up to everybody that's locked in hit that like button subscribe all of that Hope everybody's recovered from Pochettino Independence Day yesterday, 21st of May 2024. We will never forget. We will never forget. But yeah, it is good to be back on the channel. Shout out to everybody that's locked in. So, this season, bruv, we started off with a pre-season that had everybody gassed from the start. Like, we were playing really good football. We saw a lot of players shining, the likes of Nicholas Jackson, the likes of Matson, the likes of um, Gallagher, who actually had a very good preseason as well. Um, who else? Who else off the top of my head? Angelo Gabriel, he shined in preseason. Chalaba had some good games. I remember he was wearing the armband in some of those matches as well. The only player that really didn't look good coming out of preseason, I think, was Ben Chilwell, if anything. But everyone else and everything else looked very promising. We ended as Summer Series champions. Yeah. Up the Chels. Up the Chels. Premier League champions in my eyes. And we went into the start of the season very confident. Very confident that we were going to get back to where the bare minimum should have been with Chelsea, which was top four. And then we just got sent crashing back down to earth, bruv. Liverpool, we did well. West Ham was a tough defeat to take, but we stomached it. We put it down to growing pains and everything. Then we had the Forest game, which was still one of the most hideous games I've ever watched, but kept quiet. We put it down to growing pains again. Then we protected the point away at our winless Bournemouth team, and we lost 1-0 to Villa after taking our striker off for a DM and taking our best creator off. Then the question started to come out, and oh, 2 0 at Atalanta. Leverkusen might be done out. Well, then again, how many other times have we said that? But yeah, um, so this first round of games wasn't good, but we started to get back into speed around October. I think we won three games in a row around that run. Drew 2 2 to Arsenal. We didn't necessarily want that. Like we should have won, we should have won that game, but we absolutely threw it away off the back of two stupid individual mistakes. And Robert Sanchez, we will not forget that pass, that pass. But then things started to take a turn for the worse. Drew uh, lost to Brentford. We did beat Tottenham four one, but I still stand that as the worst four one win I've ever seen in my life. That was just two idiots fighting. A brilliant 4-4 draw against Man City where we stepped toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Premier League champions before getting battered 4-1 ourselves by Newcastle. Then, Man United away. Man United away happened and Everton away back-to-back. -back. And that is when I officially turned Poch out. I was Poch doubt from about Bournemouth. I went straight Poch out after United. We had the 2-0 win over bottom of the table Sheffield United that stunk. Um, before scraping against Newcastle to the quarterfinals and losing at Wolves. We managed to turn things around of two defeats before the end of the year, beat Preston in the cup, and then got battered by Middlesbrough's B team. We lost. We lost in embarrassing fashion. Um, also got battered at Liverpool, battered against Wolves. Then things start to take the turn for the better. Um, we beat Crystal Palace 3-1. Again, a really bad performance, but we managed to get the victory in that game. Drew again at City before losing the Carabao Cup final to inexperienced children. Drew to Brentford as well. Also drew to a 10-man Burnley and Sheffield United away. But in spite of those results, form did start to pick up. We managed to beat Man United. We managed to beat Newcastle, albeit not in convincing fashion. 1-6-0 at Everton, though. Can't say nothing about that. And then the 5-0. Less said about that, the better. But after that... The five-game run, 
the brilliant five game run where we beat Tottenham, West Ham and scraped victories against Forest and Bournemouth. And we just managed to get sixth at the end of it. But hey, at least we got into Europe. That season was the one word to describe it, which is my first point, bittersweet. Bittersweet because we could have got fourth place. I know a lot of people don't like to hear it, but tough, you're going to hear it again. Uh, we should have got fourth place. The amount of silly points that we dropped in numerous places in the season, Sheffield United, Burnley, Brentford, Nottingham Forest, Bournemouth, Man United, Everton, Wolves. See, I can just name them off the top of my head because I've had to explain it so many times. But it's bittersweet for me. This team was capable of so much more, but b -b 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 injuries came and cost us again. And now it came out from The Athletic that Pochettino's training sessions were a big reason for those injuries. So everyone who doubted me on that, you can all hold that. I've been telling people about that for the longest and everyone wanted to rip the medical team for it. But yeah, my first point, a, a bittersweet end to the season. Really bittersweet. My second point, these players are good enough. For the fact that we could have got fourth place, for the fact that we could have had that Carabao Cup, in spite of all of the tactical issues, in spite of all of the missed chances and the bad performances, we could have got fourth, we could have got a cup. And there would have been such little complaints if that was the case. And that's what makes me very excited for next season, which is also my third point. I'm really looking forward to next season. I know it's uncertain with who might take over the role next season, but I genuinely don't think we can do worse than Pochettino. Like, it would have to take a special level of incompetence for these directors to go and find an even worse manager than the last guy you pulled up. I won't put it past them, because they have a lot of making up to do with us. Now Poch is gone, all eyes turn to you lot now. Um, there, there we go. All eyes are on you guys. But I really don't think anybody could get any worse out of this squad. This squad should be going for top four. It should be going for Europa and a domestic cup. I, I don't feel that keen on the likes of McKenna and Maresca. But I'm sure they probably play better football than Pochettino anyway. Hernes, Amarim, De Zerbi, um, Michel Sanchez. If we can get any of those four, then I will be optimistic because those are all four very good managers. I've heard good things about Fonseca as well. So that might be a good option too. I need to do a bit more research into him. But between all the new manager that could be joining and also the players returning back from injury, next season might be looking good for us. Might be. I'm going to watch my words on that though. But I do feel excited for next season. Fourth point, Caicedo. It wouldn't be a five things we learned if we didn't have one side dedicated to Moises Caicedo because this guy has absolutely been excellent for long periods of this season. Structures let him down and he's still been able to get by in spite of that in games like the Luton match, for example, where he had Gallagher just running around that right wing when he was meant to be at the pivot. But we should have a much better structure next season. And if we don't, again, directors, you lot need to get out because you hired another bum. But Caicedo has been so good for us in so many parts of the season. He's been one of our most consistent players. And I'm excited to see what he's like under a proper manager next season. Because this last guy had Caicedo looking average, which phew, takes a lot of work. Takes a lot of work. Um, my final point. Would it be a season review if we didn't talk about Cole Palmer? And how he managed to turn Chelsea into his own club. And to make himself the face of the club. In the space of, what, months? Just months. It's sensational what he's done. At the age that he's done, with the lack of experience that he's had. With the lack of tactics around us. It's been brilliant to see what he's done. He has carried this club on his back for so many parts of the season. Like, I'm glad we've got him locked down. I need to see an extension for him as well. Get him another eight-year deal as well. And if he has kids, sign them up as well, bruv. Sign them up as well. But I'm excited to see what he's saying as well under a new manager. Honourable mentions, Enzo. I look forward to seeing him under a better coach and without being forced to play with a hernia injury for six months. And the last honourable mention, Thiago Silva. Just two words. Thank you. Now, that's the end of five things we learnt. Big up to everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Put oh, he's gone. <laughs> Hit the like button, subscribe, and up the chels.